and that's a shot. That's off the green monster. And the Yankees are mounting a comeback here, and he is out at the plate. Whoa. Ha. Welcome to the Angler's Path. You can see I'm not fishing uh, in this video. This video is actually going to be a, a fly tying video. And so I'm sitting here tying flies, getting ready for Bighorn trip and watching the American League wild card game. Uh, the Yankees are, are falling behind uh, Boston. And if I if I look up like that occasionally, uh, it's because I'm watching a ball game. I'm going to tell you about this fly that I'm tying here this evening. Uh, this is uh, a new pattern. Uh, that I've never fished this pattern on the Bighorn River. Uh, I've been reading all about it uh, in recent reports uh, and reports that, that I researched from last fall. Uh, this is a Bighorn Angler custom fly. It's called Pete's Bugger. I would encourage you to go on the Bighorn Angler website and uh, you can read about it there and you'll see it featured in a lot of their uh, fishing reports uh, throughout the year, uh, particularly the fall. Let me tell you a bit about, uh, about the materials that I'll be using here. This is a Allen streamer hook. It's a size two, uh, 52, 62. I've been using Allen hooks for a number of years. Uh, they've treated me well, and you can't really, you can't really beat the price on them. They're, um, they're, they're a good deal. I've got about 15 wraps of uh, 0.30 lead wire, and as I mentioned, a uh, nickel-colored cone head. I think in the video probably looks more like like a silver cone head. Thread. I'm using a uh, red UTC 140. Um, I don't think the color matters much. When I tie streamers, I like to use a heavier thread. I kind of yank down on the marabou and and everything so i'll be using um, that thread most of the tail will be brown uh, as you'll see but underneath the brown i put just a little puff tuft of uh of black marabou as well for the main body i'll be using peacock ice dub i like to again i, I find using dubbing on bughorn or on buggers for the bighorn uh, helps keep that slender pattern rather than using uh, like a real thick chenal. Uh, it just seems to be too bulky. Uh, I have a lateral line uh, using just a piece of purple flashaboo will be the lateral line on this fly. If you look at the Bighorn Angler website, you see I think they have blue, uh, blue lateral line. Uh, but I don't have blue flashaboo, so we're going to use purple. Uh, for the hackle, I'm going to palmer in a piece of grizzly saddle hackle. Uh, again, I'm going to try and keep it my, my turns spread out. Uh, to keep the materials at a minimum and then all of that gets locked down with a piece of uh, just red UTC small small wire there you go so that's just going to be a list of my materials I'll put that in the description too so if you want to reference that you can so uh, let's get started uh, the game is still 4-1 it is the bottom of the sixth inning and looks like the Red Sox got two guys on they pretty much have this game in hand uh, which is okay by me because a couple of my fishing buddies are, are Red Sox fans. And uh, I'm a Pirates fan. And uh, it was kind of nice to see Garrett Cole get knocked out. Uh, so well, enough about baseball. Let's tie a fly. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. And the reason I flip it over is because when I tie in a marabou tail, uh, I, especially when I'm using two pieces of marabou, now the black is going to go on the bottom, and so I tie that on on the bottom, and then, um, well, let's just tie that on. So let's just get the let's get the thread started here. All right, so I got the thread started. I'm going to take my thread all the way back to um, pretty much the bend of the hook. Uh, I like to line it up right. I like to line the thread up pretty much right where the barb is. And uh, for all of you uh, catch and release folks out there, uh, yes, I will be bending the bar down. Now I'm going to put my uh, the under part of the marabou tail, um, and I'm just 
I'm going to just put that right, right underneath there. And I'm going to tie the marabou in on the bottom part of the tail or of the shank. Okay, so a couple wraps to tie that in. I pull that up. I bring my thread almost all the way back to where my wire is. And then I'm going to pinch and tie that down again. And what this does, uh, you'll see here once I get the, the brown piece on, uh, it actually uh, makes a consistent um, body. Uh, so this is sort of the build up the bottom part um, of the fly. And now I'm just going to take that out. Uh, and you can see that kind of lines up right, right on the bottom. Um, just it's a very again you might be saying that's not a lot of marabou but again the, the sparser the material i have found on the bighorn river the better okay so now i'm going to put a little heavier chunkier piece of brown the, the black's just really an, it's like an underbody or an under tail there is such a thing now if you're still watching this video you're really committed uh, to learning how to tie this fly because it's basically just a woolly bugger my tails are always uh, at the length of the, the hook shank. I'm going to lay that right on top of there. I'm going to really hammer that down uh, so my tail doesn't spin. And then again, I lift, I lift this up. I bring it back to where the lead starts. I tie it down back here. And just do the same thing. I really crank that down. And then I'm going to cut this off. Now what you're going to find here is once, once you tie this all in, you get a nice consistent body. Um, the marabou on the bottom of the hook shank and the marabou on the top of the hook shank helps um, equal out. There's the same thickness in the body all the way up. That's just the way I do it. I don't know if that means anything or helps. All right, let's put the lateral line in here. Just got my piece of uh, purple flashaboo. Uh, make it a little long to start with. I'll cut it when I'm done. I'll tie um, that lateral line in that's facing me. And now I'm just going to take that piece. And I am going to tie it on the side that's facing you. Uh, I'm just going to lift those straight up. Okay, and then I just cut it just a tiny bit longer than the tail. All right, and now, so the tail's done. And I got a nice consistent thickness in the body. Just gonna bring my thread up here and lock that, um, lock that wire in a little better so it doesn't twist and turn. It shouldn't turn, but uh, speaking of lead wire, it's time to put the red wire in. Piece of wire in there. It doesn't really matter where you tie it in at. Uh, I always tie it in and then I fold this over so it can't pull out. Uh, again, I, I don't think I've ever had a uh, the palmered wire fall off my, my streamer. But maybe that's why. Because I do that all the time when I'm tying, tying woolly buggers. It's time to dub on the peacock, the peacock body. So just going to use a little bit of dubbing. I'll take my ice dub. There's no wrong way to do this. Just make a, a dubbing noodle. Uh, sometimes I, I start close to the hook shank and work my way back down to my bobbin. Sometimes I start at the bobbin and work my way back up to the uh, hook shank. It's just personal preference. One thing I do want to point out, though, is you need kind of a long dubbing noodle here. Uh, and again, I try to keep the dubbing uh, a consistent thickness uh, all the way down through. Uh, I'm probably going to do close to you know, 10 inches here, 10 to 9 to 10 inches of a, of a, dubbing, a dubbing noodle. Uh, it always seems to work out. Uh, and if it doesn't, you just pull some off. But as you can see, uh, I've tied about six or seventy so far, and I've, I've kind of have the length not quite perfected yet. So that's long enough. I'm just going to pull this off. I'm going to yank that off of there. All right. 
Okay, so we're ready to Palmer some hackle now. Uh, nice uh, buggy peacock colored body. Uh, I'll take my piece of uh, saddle hackle. Again, just using a piece of grizzly saddle hackle. Uh, one of the things that I do, I learned this at a long time ago, is I cut a little arrowhead into the, see that little arrowhead that I cut? And then that's my tie in point. Actually, you know what? No, that's, I got to get that webby stuff off of there. So that's going to be better. Now I'm going to cut that little arrow in. And what this does is this just, that tells me where my tie in point is. And so I'm going to put that in facing me. Okay, I'm going to crank that down four or five turns around there. All right, so I'm going to, again, the less material, the better. So one wrap, then I'll wrap behind it towards the, uh, towards the cone head. And then I'm just going to give it f maybe four, possibly five turns all the way down the shank of the hook. Um, grab my hackle pliers. So I get a hold of that and my wire is going to hold that in place. Um, and then I'm just going to bring that wire. If you're watching this video, you probably, you probably know how to tie a woolly bugger. Uh, and so I'm just going to Palmer and bring this wire back up through the, uh, saddle hackle I call that palmering and i'm going to get this as close and as tight and sometimes i even just try to get it underneath underneath the uh the cone head there we go all right and uh every fly should be every fly tire should know how to whip finish with their hands uh if you use a whip finish tool um, then you should be pretty impressed right now. All right. So just cut this hackle off. And there we got ourselves a Pete's bugger. And I am looking forward to trying this pattern out on the Bighorn River. There you go. Pete's Bighorn bugger. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned to the Angler's Path. Uh, more videos coming up. Uh, videos from my recent trip to Yellowstone. Uh, some local fishing trips here in Western PA. And uh, before long, uh, you'll see me on the Bighorn River. Thanks for watching. I uh, forgot to tell you, score is still 4-1 Boston. This game is pretty much in hand, top of seventh.